Today I'm really excited because I'm going to show you how to make photo mugs. Photo mugs are just such a great gift, especially for the person who has everything and you can personalize your mug however you want to. So I will be using my Epson Sure Color F170 sublimation printer. I'll be using my Cricut Mug Press and we'll be using Canva to make our design. If we're just meeting right now, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. Let's go ahead, jump onto the computer and get started. The first thing you're gonna do is head over to canva.com. Now, if you're not familiar with Canva, it is a free design program. However, you can get a subscription as well for Canva, which just unlocks a lot more features. I do have the Canva Pro version, but if you're just using the free version, you can definitely still make a photo mug using Canva. So we're gonna go up to create a design and I'm using the Cricut 12 ounce mugs for this project. So I'm gonna scroll down and click on custom size. And then the size you'll need for the Cricut 12 ounce mugs is 8.75 by 3.79. So here's our canvas for our design, which we will eventually wrap around our mug. Now, if you go over to the left hand side, you can click on uploads. And you'll notice I have uploaded a bunch of pictures here, but it's super simple to upload your own photo. All you have to do is find your photos on your computer and then go ahead and drag and drop your photo. And then once your photo has been uploaded, you can drop that on to your canvas. Now you can put as many pictures as you want on your canvas or you can simply use one. I recently did a mug with a whole collage of photos. I'll show you over here. We have a whole pile of pictures on one mug and this turned out really good. So let's go back over to our canvas and I'm just gonna use one photo for today's project. So as you can see, this photo is not the same shape as a rectangle, but that's okay. We can still fill the entire space with this photo. So all we have to do is stretch it out and it can go past our lines here. So just stretch it out however big you want your photo to be and you can move it around, rearrange it. And if you go to the bottom here, you'll notice this slider so you can zoom in and out. So if you zoom out, you can see our purple line here. So that is the outside of our photo. It's not gonna appear on our canvas. It's just showing you the perimeters of the actual photo. And then you can also drag your photo around a little bit more here. So if you want it zoomed in a little bit more, you can just stretch it out. And when you think you're happy with the placement, you can zoom back in again, and that will make it easier to work on your canvas. Now, I often like to think of my mug templates in thirds because we have the front, back, and the middle of the mug. So what we can do is add grid lines to our image just to help us think in thirds a little better. So if we go up to file, we can go down to view settings and then click on add guides. Now it has some preset options here, but you can also go to custom. So I like to go over to custom for the columns. We're going to change this to three and the gap in between, I don't want a gap in between, so we're going to put that at zero. And then you can click on add guides. And then you can see here we have purple lines dividing our picture into thirds. Now these guides aren't permanently on your picture, they're just there to help you visualize. And if you want to remove those guides, you can go back up to file, go to view settings, and click on clear guides. But we'll leave them there for now. So I'd like to move my canoe a little over a little bit, so I'm just gonna drag it over a bit. And I now have it right in the center of my mug, which will be opposite the handle of the mug. Now I'd also like to add some text to this photo. So you can do that by going over to text on the left-hand side, click on add text box, and then type in your text. I'm gonna type in a Bible verse here. So he leads me beside still waters. And it's really hard to see, so let's stretch this out and make it a little bigger and bring it over here. And I also want to add the verse, so I'm gonna add another text box and type that in. So we have Psalm 23 2b. Now this font does not look very exciting, so let's go ahead and change this. So the font I want to use is called Brush. 
And so we have a few different fonts here with the name brush in them. So there's Alex brush or brush script or regular brush. You can see the regular brush does not have a crown beside it. So if you're using the free version, you can use that one. I think I'm gonna use the brush script one though. I like that one. And because I do have Canva Pro, I'm able to use that. Now I don't like the spacing of the words here, but we can fix that. So if we highlight our words here. We can go up to the top where it says spacing, and then you can change the line spacing right here just by moving the dot along the slider, and you can see my lines getting closer together. And that looks much better. And I also want to change this font, so I'm gonna highlight that, go up to our font selection here, and I'm gonna use the font here called Cantor and that looks really small too so let's make that a little bigger and let's also change the color of this text here so to do that we're going to highlight that then click on text color and right here it says photo colors these are just colors that canva has picked out from your photo that you may want to use so let's go ahead and select the dark brown color here that it picked out from our photo and you see that blends in really nice, but I find it's blending in maybe a little too much. So what we can do is edit our text here. So if we go up to effects, we have a bunch of different style options over here on the left. So I'm gonna click on lift and you can see how that just made my text just pop out. It kind of gives it a little blurred shadow behind the text and you can change the intensity of that as well by dragging your little dot, you can make it bigger or you can make that shadow a little smaller. So you can play around with that and decide what you like best. So I think that's looking pretty good and I think I'll also do that over here for our other text as well. So back to effects and click on lift. And that just makes our text jump off the page just a little more. Now I'm gonna play around with the placement just a little bit here. All right, I moved my canoe a little bit over again because I found I had too much green grass there. So I think this is looking a little better. Once you're happy with where everything is, we can go ahead and go up to the top right and click on share. And this is how we're gonna save our image. And under file type, it usually automatically suggests PNG and that's exactly what we want. But I just wanted to show you that you can save your projects in different formats if you are doing a different type of project. So you could save it as a PDF, a JPEG. Uh, if you have the pro version, you can save it as an SVG. And there's lots of options here. Now I made the mistake once of saving this as a PDF print. And that really messed up my colors when I printed it on my sublimation printer. So don't save it as a PDF print. Make sure you're saving it as a PNG. So we have PNG selected and then you can go ahead and click on download. So right here is our downloaded image. If it doesn't pop up for you on the screen like it just did for me, you can go to your downloads folder on your computer and just open it up there. Now I'm using an Apple computer, so I'm able to print this image directly from my computer without having to open up another program. So because I'm on a Mac, I can just go up to file and then click on print. Now under printer, I have my regular inkjet printer currently selected and I wanna change that to my Epson F170. So I'm gonna click on that. And then when you scroll down under scale, make sure that's set to 100%. Just double check that to make sure your printer is printing the right size image. We've already sized this design in Canva, so there's no need to adjust the scale or the size of printing here. Now under printer options, we're gonna click on color matching, then click on color sync. And because we're putting this on a mug, we're gonna select rigid. So you'll notice two options here. One says textile in brackets, one says rigid. Make sure you choose rigid. And then click on OK. And then under color matching, we have print settings. So go ahead and click on that. Then under media type, make sure you have selected rigid and not textile. Under print quality, you can change that from normal to fine. 
so that you have a better print quality. And always make sure the mirror image is checked on with the Epson Color F170. It's always automatically on, so there's nothing you need to change there. And then click on OK. I already have my Epson sublimation paper in my printer, so I'm going to click on print. So my picture just finished printing out and it looks really good. I'm really liking this. So the first thing we need to do is trim off the extra paper here. Now you can use a paper trimmer, but sometimes I find my paper trimmer will snag on me and then I have to print a whole new one. So sometimes it's just best to grab a pair of scissors and cut along the outside edge. Now before we go ahead and put our design on our mug, let's turn our Cricut mug press on and let that warm up while we put our design on our cup. So first you're going to grab your lint roller and we're just going to go over our cup and remove any lint that is on our cup. If you did have any spots or lint on your mug, that would affect your design and you might end up with some discoloration and we don't want that. If you don't have a lint roller, you can always take rubbing alcohol as well and wipe your mug down with a lint-free cloth. Then we're going to grab our design and you'll notice that it is quite a bit lighter than what it was on the computer and that is normal with sublimation images. Once we press it onto our mug, it will look a whole lot darker. So I'm going to lay my design flat here and then line this up on my mug. Now I want to make sure that I have the same distance on each side of the handle. So right now this is off. So let's move this a little bit. Sometimes I find it helps if you have your mug stand up and that way you can get the bottom edge of your design flat against the bottom there. And my mug press just reached its temperature. So let's get this on here. And that looks like it's lined up pretty good. And then also look at your edges to make sure your image is touching the bottom of your mug. And then I'm gonna grab some heat resistant tape. This is just Cricut brand. It doesn't matter what brand of heat resistant tape that you use. Once your design is in place, put a piece of tape down in the center. And then I like to really pull on the other side, making sure this paper is on here really tight because we don't wanna have any bubbles in it. And then we can add another piece of tape here in the center. And then I'm just going to go around the sides and put more tape here on the sides. And then also around the top here, especially if you have any gapping, you really want to secure your design on with some tape and you can do the bottom as well. So let's grab some more tape and finish taping this up. Once you finish taping up your mug, Grab a few sheets of butcher paper. I have two sheets here and I'm gonna wrap these around my mug and then secure it with a piece of tape. And then we're ready to put it into our mug press. So gently put your mug inside and then go ahead and clamp down your press. Now it'll take about five or six minutes and then we can take it out and reveal our design. Now with a Cricut mug press, you can grab the handle and remove your mug from your mug press after it's ready, but I like to use heat gloves just so I don't accidentally burn my hands and touch the wrong place on the mug or the mug press. So let's take our mug out. It just beeped and I'm going to slowly remove this and looks like my top is peeling off already or butcher paper there. That's okay. Now, you can wait for this to cool before you peel it off if you don't have heat gloves. If you do have heat gloves, you can go ahead and remove it right away. Just keep in mind the mug is going to be very, very hot. So I'm going to slowly remove this. Sometimes it's hard to peel the tape away when you're wearing gloves. So that's another reason you may want to wait for it to cool. So I'm just peeling this off. You can see the design coming through there. And let's try to get the rest of this off. And here is our finished mug. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for more sublimation videos, I'll leave some link down below in the description. And I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.